I'd like to call to order the West Point Village Board meeting of June 7, 2018 at 6 o'clock p.m. and ask Clerk Simsky for a roll call. Mayor Gunther? Here. The clerk's here. Trustee Edding? Here. Trustee Baker? Barker? Here. <laughs> or Baker? Either way. <laughs> Trustee Berry? Here. I better put my glasses on. Trustee Guzzo? Here. Trustee Little? Here. Trustee Nero? Here. Attorney Zemanek? Here. Manager May? Here. Finance Director Parker. Here. Would everybody please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome. To this beautiful night as our first cruising night so jenny's going to ask you why you're in here <laughs> and not out at uh, cruising night um, but first item on the agenda open form is there anybody here who i do have a request i have one request i didn't know if anybody else this is the time if you want to talk about something not on the agenda to see chief uh, the open form request i have is for the angel haven Foundation, and um, I think we see you every year. But come on up to the podium and. Uh, wow. <laughs> Barb. Correct. Hi, my name is Barbara Bruce, and I'm a director of the Angel Haven Foundation. We currently support over 200 families down in the Appalachian Mountains of Virginia, and what we try to do for them is bring their standard of living up to just the poverty level because they are so poor down there. Um, once a year we have our benefit sale. It's held at the uh, West Hills Community Church lot at 213 East 55th Street. It's right across from the BP. And what we do is all year long I collect items for the foundation and the items I do not send down is what we have in our benefit sale. How we work the sale is we just put everything out under tents and on tables. We ask the community to come in and pick up a few items and just leave a donation for us. With the proceeds from this sale, we purchase food for them because we get everything donated throughout the year for them except food. So the sale is from June 21st through June 24th. We open at 9 and we close at 6. Um, if anyone in the community would like me to come out and pick up items they'd like to donate, my phone number is 630-971-1842. And the only thing I ask is that it's on the first level. Can't do attics, can't do basements anymore. <laughs> if anybody would like to come out and help us separate, sort, bag, tag, I currently have three storage units, a two-car garage, and a basement full of stuff. So we are always in the market for people to come out and just help put stuff out on the table and help us to get it organized. But if anybody has any questions, uh, you can feel free to give me a call at that number, and um, we'll get you squared away. 630-971-1824. 1842. Oh, I reversed it. That's right. <laughs> what day is the sale again? June 21st through June 24th. Do you have a list of things that you, you know, you ship things to them directly? Uh, I, do you have I, a list of things that they currently need? Um, um, the, the items that we ship to them is everything you have in your own home. Everything from furniture to appliances, to dishes, to shower curtains, to toothbrushes. Uh, we are always, always in the need of blankets for them or beds. I've got a, four little children sleeping on a floor down there. And I've got to get a queen size bed to get them up off the floor. So it's, I'll come and pick up your refrigerator, your stoves, bags of clothes, books. Uh, we, we are currently helping the library down there to restock them. The elementary school that we help down there, the nurse has a $600 budget per year. So. We're always in need of Band-Aids and Tylenol and ointments and 
bandages and things like that. Um, when we get boxes together for her, we just ship those directly down to her. All administrative costs come out, come out of our own pockets. So if anybody has anything they'd like to donate, you can either drop it off at the sale site during the sale or give me a call before and I'll come and get it before the sale. Okay. Okay. Good. Good Any luck. other questions? We'll have it on the next yes. meeting and for approval. I'll expect Official. everybody at my sale this year. Hi. There you go. <laughs> All right, I'll close uh, <clears throat> open forum and move on to reports. And I'm going to ask uh, Trustee Addington right now to give some sad news um, about one of our longtime business individuals in the community. We were notified earlier today the passing of Fred Iozo Sr. Fred Iozo was the owner and operator of Ogden Lincoln Mercury that was the very first and for many years the only car dealership in Westmont and it was actually the first car dealership back in the 50s that went across Route 83 into DuPage County. Um, I've known Fred or I knew Fred for years. He was a director at the Bank of Westmont when I worked there as a loan officer. An unbelievably great person. Um, did a lot for the community. He was very much a community person. Um, two sons, Fred Jr., who ran the business for many years after Fred retired down to Florida. And, um, and now it's run by his other son, Mark. Um, but Fred will definitely be missed. Um, a good man in the community and, and kind of a, kind of one of our, again, it's part of our history of, of uh, when there wasn't car dealership row as we kind of have today Fred was it mm -hmm. and uh, but like I said a really good man and good for the community and very supportive of things went on and uh, uh, I've known him since well since I went to work for the bank in 1970 so 50 years ago and like I said a really great guy he will definitely be missed the services they're doing visitation Friday morning at St. Joseph's Church in Downers Grove from 9 a.m. to 11, and then the funeral mass will be right after that at 11 o'clock also at St. Joseph's. But um, somebody that, that we will definitely miss in this town and someone who we should remember always for the being one of the pioneers in Westmont. Thank you. A couple other updates, uh, our sister city update. Our sister city friends will be visiting us July 9th through the 15th, and it corresponds with the Taste of Westmont. So they'll be our guest during that week. Um, Independence Day celebration, July 4th at Ty Warner Park, fireworks at 9.30. Uh, there'll be activities, check the Westmont Park District's um, website for the different activities and entertainment, but really it's a family-oriented event starts about three or four and goes on through the fireworks so um, please come on up and enjoy it it's the best in the state that's what larry's so that's all i have i'll ask clerk simsky for some information i just want to remind or tell everybody that our village offices will be closed for staff training on tuesday june 19th so don't come to pay any bills or anything because we won't be open. You can put them in the drop box, but we will not be open. And I wanted to do a little recap on the race to the flag, which was, in spite of the heat on Sunday, a huge success. We had 494 runners. We were six short of 500, which wow. made us all sick. <laughs> but it was a great turnout and I think we had to transport a few people because of the heat, but they were okay. Everybody was okay. So, and then last Saturday was the police open house, and it was great. Deputy Chief, it was a terrific day up there. It really was. You had a great turnout. My grandchild had a ball. So, mm -hmm. can't ask for any more than that. And our Veterans Day or Memorial Day parade was outstanding I thought and the ceremony yes. as usual so 
just thanks to everybody Thank involved in all of that. You're going to tell them to get out there now? I am. And, yeah. and if you're watching this, now you can turn off the TV <laughs> and get your panties down on Cass <laughs> Avenue and walk the cruising night. Mm -hmm. It's fun. Everybody's out there. You can walk <clears throat> in the middle of the street. You're not going to get run over. And you can have a lot of fun. So lots of things going on. Thank you. <laughs> and I'll let follow up with Trustee Addington. Oh, again, OK. Um, I mentioned this last time, but I'll just re-mention it again. Um, schools, both Tool District School 201 and Marker District 60 um, are, are out of school. Kids are in the streets. They're on their sidewalks. They're playing. They're having a good time. They're riding their bikes. So everyone, please be very careful. Protect our children as much as you can as they enjoy summer away from school. Um, we want to offer a congratulations again we have a company here in town, Denver, who has now received, I think it's the third or fourth time that they've been named by the Department of Commerce and Community Affairs as the exporter of the year. They received the 2018 award. Um, I think a lot of you have met the folks. They, they have come here in the past, and we did a... Um, an economic development tour there just to meet them and see it but um, that's one of the nice little companies there uh, over there on North Blackhawk just north of Ogden Avenue um, by Ty Warner Park Annex and um, they do a very very nice job they're very very nice people so again congratulations to them um, you have received a pass out from today uh, for community development updates um, before Jill Ziegler left she was kind enough to put a lot of information together we have not had a community development meeting um, because of the changes there but at some point in time we'll have another one but this kind of gives everybody update on all the permits and a lot of things that are going on and everything else so please read it ask questions it's very busy down there very busy yeah it's extremely busy down there um, and then uh, the last thing is just to say thank you to all the many, 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 many volunteers who helped us with the red, white, and barbecue. It turned out to be, even though it was blazing hot, uh, a great success. Um, the heat kind of kept some people away. We didn't quite sell the number of beers that we normally do. We were down a couple of a couple of half barrels, but. There, there was it was a great success for the first time ever the number of competing teams went over 200 we had 204 teams competing in the state competition on Friday the amateur competition on Saturday and then the main competition on Saturday and Sunday we've never had that many different entities competing before so all it does is keep getting bigger and better and Again, thanks to all of you. Several of you are out there helping in one capacity or another, and it's greatly appreciated. The Lions want to thank everyone, and want to thank the the community for coming and helping and participating. And it's one of the premier events. It's one of the premier barbecue events in the entire Midwest now. And um, we'll see everybody at it next year. Thank you. And that's it, sir. Thank you very Thank you. much. Trustee Guzzo. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, a couple things. First off, we're going to start with the fire department. The 95th anniversary celebration, the committee continues to promote the open house on Saturday, October 13th, 2018, from 1 to 3. It's going to be at the South Fire Station. Uh, members will be handing out Save the Day cards at all the special events coming up. Secondly, the Kids Safety Camp. I would like to invite up Roseanne to give us a recap on the Kids Safety Camp. Um, so we wrapped up day two of the kickoff of the camp um, for the summer here and I guess on behalf of myself and John McIntosh um, we're glad to be back for that because we really enjoy hanging out with the kids and um, just having a good time with them. 
Some of the things that we uh, have been able to bring to camp and we did tour these past two days um, were we bring in some outside vendors per se and one of them is Burlington Northern Santa Fe which is really important because we stress to all the kids in town there is a train running through Westmont, there's trains running through Clarendon Hills, um, Hinsdale and all around so they do a really good job of educating them and working with us to keep them safe and what to look for and the lights and the gates and paying attention and all that kind of thing so it's really important and that's the key to this camp is really it is safety that's what it's called and that's what we stress but we also want to have a good time with them too so we try to make it fun we get a lot of handouts to them and um, little knickknacks and bags and things like that um, I've also been able to put a little bit of twist on things that are I'm passionate about um, some people in the village know that it is animal related um, we do have a lot of wildlife in town and so for these past few years we brought in Willowbrook wildlife to educate kids on um, approaching animals how to do it not to do it what to do if something's hurt or or stressed or injured um, who to talk to we want to make them educated and know that it's really good to come to a police officer or come to a firefighter or a teacher or someone in town if something like that happens so it's a big thing for us um, we also have Oak Brook canine unit come in it's important for them to see what police officers do that's a big part of it too and um, officer Franzek from Oak Brook comes in and gives a good demo he lets the kids um, ask questions and get close to the dog which is also again another safety thing too because lots of these dogs and handlers are out at a lot of summer events and then they know um, what to do and don't approach you know or when they can and things like that um, John talks a lot about fire safety we do a lot of um, house plans for the kids and what to know in case of an emergency how to get in and out of their house what to do who to call where to go when they get outside the house um, he covers a lot of first aid with them which is really important um, so if they ever have to help themselves or help their parents or help a neighbor or a family member something like that we make sure they know who to call um, and how to get hold of somebody um, we also have EMA come in, which um, is the major preparedness for any kind of horrific event, you know, tornadoes or floods or things like that. We may not have some of the things that other states have, but it's a good opportunity for kids to see, um, again, having like a, a pack ready for them, for their families if they need something um, to be able to get out of their house quickly, you know, how to put together a bag with water and canned foods and things like that. So it's important at that age for them to understand that um, and kind of have fun with that. Um, what else do we have in two? We also have Hensdale Humane Society come in. Um, they talk about just safety around animals in general, whether the kids are with their own or with a family member, a neighbor, or something like that. How to approach, when to approach. Um, they're out in the streets, like we said, school's out right now, so a lot of these kids are out in parks. Um, you know, dog can get loose, something like that. That's not like our, our main focus, but it's something we want to teach them um, to know what to do in those situations. Um, making sure they know their addresses, how to dial 911, their cell phones, contact cards with family members and names on that. So it's fun. We have a really good time with them. And then um, what they all love the most is really sometimes is the food. <laughs> we get outside vendors. Um, this year we had Great American Bagel sponsor sandwiches for them, and then also Zazos as well, which was really great of them. We were appreciate the local businesses stepping up and doing that for them um, and their lunches. And then at the end of the day today, today, we actually got to be outside with them with the nice weather. We also cover um, internet safety. We cover stranger danger. We do a lot of bike safety. Um, we had a bike patrol officer, Sage, come out today. We do obstacle courses with them, hand signals, stopping, and all that kind of thing so that when they are on their bicycles driving in town or even if they go visit a parent somewhere else or friends or family, they know what to do even if they're away from home. So it's, it's pretty important stuff. And then they uh, get to get wet. We, uh, John gets the hose out and we do a lot of uh, outdoor activity with them with that in their bathing suits and have a little bit of fun and a little bit of energy out because they are quite energetic at that age. Um, and that kind of wraps it up. And we really enjoy it. Um, I was also saying to Chief Weiss that I, in the last couple years that this is the fourth year that I think we're doing it. Um, I've seen a jump in newer kids, which is really great because we must be doing something right as a whole village because the word is spreading and I'm seeing a uh, more handful of kids, not always the same kids, which is good. So people are hearing about it and word of mouth and they're enjoying it too, so. Wonderful, and there's another class then too. We've got another one coming up. Another, too, right? yeah, the second one is July 31st and August 1st. And, and would they can still sign up for that one? I think it's, I think it's close to full yeah. actually, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Um, I think we top it at like 35, and I think today's class, I think we had 32. So it's it was it filled up a lot quicker Great. this year too, which is good. That means again that people Wonderful. are hearing about it. They're entrusting our kids, to, you know, to mm -hmm. have them there, and the parents really seem to enjoy it. Great.
Wonderful. Do you talk train safety at all with the kids? We do. I think I don't know if I said at the beginning, Burlington Northern Santa Fe came in. They're um, there for about 45 minutes or so. They cover um, a, quite a bit with that. It's good to have someone a little bit more knowledgeable come in. And again, with all this going through our town, and the kids are pretty intent on listening and the videos and the handouts and things like that, so it's really good for them. Nice. Mm -hmm. Great. Wonderful. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, moving on to the police department, as the clerk said, the, fire, uh, the police department had their open house on Saturday. Um, if the chief, does he want to recap anything about the open house? I know it was a great time. It was great to see everybody. The weather was perfect. That pretty much summed it up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Um, the auction, we did really well. Uh, we had minimal items this year compared to a lot of last times. We might have 100 bikes out there. We only had a minimal amount this time. The auction brought in about $800, which isn't bad. It's just relinquished property and stuff like that, but that we sell. Uh, great turnout, great weather. It, it was more of a steady flow this year. It seemed like in the past year it was hoard here, hoard there, you know, different groups coming in. This year was more steady, which was nice. I think the weather was the a big contributing factor to that. Wonderful. Also. It was great. Um, and then I know we do have squad car night next Thursday. Um, I don't know if you want to touch on that a little we bit. We have, currently we have 41 vehicles and 55 different officers signed up, which it'll probably increase, I would say, another 20 vehicles possibly, because it seems like the, the week before we get flooded with uh, registrations. Um, and then we are still, it's the same format with the squad cars parked out with the lights and siren parade at the end. Wonderful. And then National Night Out? National Night Out, this will be our second year of attempting National Night Out with our our version of doing it and uh, we we do it more as a uh, combined effort between my our police department the fire department and and any other entity within the village that wants to uh, partner with us and we are doing it in combination this year with cruising nights so we will be in the Manning school parking lot setting up there um, hopefully we will draw more people in. We're setting up some of the same, like People's Resource Center will be there again. The, the library, the park district will have informational booths, and I'm still expanding on that at, right, right now. Wonderful. It'll be here before you know it. Um, last but not least, our next public safety meeting will be August 16th. And that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Barrett. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we had an EDC meeting yesterday, and we had an exciting uh, proposal of Everbrook Academy. This was a uh, daycare slash school that was proposed for 63rd Street. Um, for that location, it, it came away with a negative recommendation from the committee. So um, currently, Larry is working on other locations trying to retain this uh, this unique, interesting uh, academy. So hopefully, we can we can land them in Westmont. It just wasn't a good fit on 63rd with our upcoming projects coming. Um, our next July 11th uh, EDC meeting is going to be canceled. Uh, we had the holiday of July 4th, and then we have our sister city uh, visit is that week. So we're going to kind of play it by ear, and we will let the public know if we're going to. Uh, host a meeting we will we will make it public knowledge and then we encourage everyone to stop by sweet and savory they are officially open now um, they are at their new location of 15 South Cass Avenue and uh, I happened to go by the other day and they had a big chalkboard out there and it said sun's out the buns are out so uh, <laughs> we encourage everyone to stop by there and uh, welcome them back to Westmont and uh, enjoy some of their great things thank right. you mr. mayor thank you Go to this side, Trustee Nero. Thank you, Mayor. Just a few items. Uh, our next Public Works Committee meeting will be at our before our next board meeting on the 21st. I believe it's still at 4.30 here. Unless we have a big agenda, we might do a little bit earlier so we have time. Um, and just want to let everybody know that all the new downtown lighting is complete and operational. And also the downtown plantings and hanging flower baskets have been installed. So enjoy them. They're a lot of work, and we'd like to see them out there. And that's all I have. Mayor, we'll see everybody at cruising nights. Well, I'm going to skip to Trustee Barker because I know Trustee Little has a big, mm -hmm. <laughs> she does. big She's, she's going to go on for a while. Thank yeah. you, Mayor. A <laughs> um, couple of things this evening. Uh, Westmont first was um, not meeting in July. We're going to meet in, on August 20th. Um, there's a ways away. I just don't want to remind people that we will not meet in July. Um, one of the things that we've been asked to take a look at is uh, a, a way to recognize businesses and homes that uh, do a good job with their uh, uh, property maintenance um, that was brought back to us. We tried that a few years ago through community development and it was suggested that maybe we talk about it at Westmont first as a beginning point and then bring it back to community development 
uh, in the future. So we're happy to do that. And then um, th the Environmental Improvement Committee has a speaker on Monday, June 1st at 7 p.m. And this is the one about light pollution, essentially, is the topic at the uh, library. And uh, the other thing that they've been asked to do um, it's exciting that they're getting to a, you know, a working group, but they've been asked to take a look at uh, putting out a handout or so of recycling best practices. Because what we're finding is recycling is getting more and more strict and more difficult. Um, waste management has brought that to our attention. And uh, we want to make sure that people are keeping up on this. Uh, okay. Just an interesting side note, uh, you know, we had all this talk about uh, uh, waste receptacles and the size of those cans. I was in Minnesota this week and the large can um, that my mother had was uh, for recycling and the small can was for the rest of the waste. Um, so it's a very different you know, approach there and of course that's our, our goal is to get to that point. We're just, you know, we've got a ways to go. So that is all. Well, thank you. Now last and the best is Trustee Little. <laughs> thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm here tonight promoting, obviously, street fair, so I hope everybody gets out there and turn off your TV and get out walk. There's something new this year at the uh, Cruise Nights. It's called Stepping at the Street Fair. What you do is you check in at 6 o'clock, and they check your Fitbit or your steps for the day, and they give you an hour to do all your running around, seeing all the cars, and check back in there and they're giving uh, t-shirts and stuff away so it's really a, a fun activity and trying to get everybody back in shape after a rough winter um, so that's first um, we also have the usa luge slider search event and it's on cast again this year it's our third fifth wow. it's our fifth uh, luge event and um, the olympic team comes here looking for kids of all ages and you can still register online at www.teamusa.org slash USA hyphen luge. Um, the event is planned for June 16th and 17th. It's a Saturday and a Sunday. It runs from 8 a.m. till 2 p.m. Um, if you also save your dates for the Taste of Westmont, July 12th through the 15th or Thursday through Sunday, so save those dates. So it's a big event on CAS and a lot of activity and a lot of fun stuff going on there. We did have an administration finance committee meeting tonight. We talked about microblading at salons and spas. We created or talked about the creation of a new brew slash tavern license. And we also have a couple people working for the Illinois Liquor Commission that has started their annual inspection. So be on the lookout. Businesses were coming to inspect. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a community branding meeting scheduled for Wednesday, June 27th at 6 o'clock at the library. The agenda will include information on our upcoming community perception survey, our mural initiative, and other programs. And now I'd like to introduce Larry McIntyre, communications director, to talk about the community branding youth subgroup and the new I Love Westmont concept. Thank you, Trustee Little and Village Board. Um, so we've been working on branding for a few years, but uh, got a little bit of a stall last year uh, due to uh, scheduling and so forth, but we're ready for our reboot. And uh, last night we had a meeting at the library with our youth ambassadors subgroup. This is something that uh, kind of um, grew out of the community talks program up at the junior high uh, about a month and a half ago. And so uh, we put out an invitation list and uh, we had excellent young, uh, young people uh, participate and at this point I'd like to let them talk about last night's results starting with Pranav. Well when you first talked you weren't even tall as that <laughs> <laughs> you were way to, yeah you're getting tall. I think so. my, my, might be the sandals I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Alright thank you Mr. McIntyre as usual it's a pleasure to be here. Um, so I want to talk a little bit briefly about the community talks program that kind of all this branding kind of stemmed from. Uh, as you may recall uh, Mr. Jonak, Ms. Quatron and I came a couple of weeks ago to talk about it 
But basically, it, it was a fantastic endeavor because we allowed students to, if they had their own passion, they could do research and on a specific day, they could give a speech to certain members of the community and from which we can take efforts to make a, a positive change in our community. Um, Mr. McIntyre suggested that the kids involved in community talks could get involved with this community branding initiative and he also suggested the I Love, West Con I Love Westmont contest concept. Uh, on behalf of my fellow peers, I want to thank him you know, for the opportunity to get involved because you know, it's great to get involved in the community. Uh, with that, I want to introduce Matthew. Um, so last night, what we talked about a lot was how we can make Westmont better and what's already pretty good about Westmont. And something that was a big highlight about Westmont, or what we thought was, was the events we have. So for example, Red, White, and Barbecue, and uh, Taste of Westmont, and Cruiser Nights, as going on right now, are really good examples of bringing people to Westmont and showing them what we're all about and what we have here. So when we have those, it's a good um, opportunity to have people go into the restaurants and stores we have downtown, and it's a great way to introduce people into our community. But one thing that we thought we might need was some more activities for kids to do over the summer, or even adults. So for example, there's plenty of uh, students that go to school that go and attend the Clarendon Hills pool over the summer. And we thought that maybe adding a pool in Westmont, a community pool would really help because that would bring in a lot of money for our community and um, it could really help by making some new things around the town. And then another thing we thought of was having an attraction downtown that could be year round and would be really fun for the whole community. So we thought maybe a little like new park with some um, statues that just represent Westmont and when people think of Westmont, they could think of that and it could be attraction for anyone that comes in this area to go to. So now to Josh. Thank you. So yesterday, uh, something that we talked about was this contest for promoting Westmont. So as Pranav recently stated in between, uh, that yes, this will be promoting Westmont. And so one idea that we had was that there would be 97 people that would win due to our anniversary, the 97th anniversary. And uh, the winners will be receiving one of a kind I Love Westmont t-shirts that you cannot get anywhere else. And then the grand prize for the one that completely won the contest uh, will be able to be the grand marshal at the Holly Days Parade. And all 97 contestants will be inside the Holly Days Parade as well. So something that we plan to do as a group is uh, we plan to invite Holy Trinity and that school district to come and participate in this event. We also hope to advertise Westmont on social media such as Twitter or uh, Snapchat or Instagram. So we also want to be very, uh, what is the word, active inside branding. We want to make sure that the whole community it, is involved and like really participating, trying to find a great branding solution. So back to Larry here. <laughs> so as you can see from that short example, we had a lot to talk about last night. <laughs> and it was really awesome. Uh, and. Uh, these these three are just uh, a small fraction of the of the larger group, and one of their missions is to make sure that the marker school school district uh, gets initiated in this as well. So we plan to meet several times over the course of this month, and by the end of this month, we hope to have all the details for the I Love Westmont contest ready to go, and uh, we'll start promoting that, and of course uh, announce those winners at the ninety seventh anniversary later this year. So any questions? No, it's a great idea. Oh, they were fabulous. fabulous. Yeah. 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 Uh, what a great presentation. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It's yeah. wonderful. It, it, it's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks. And that's all I have, Mayor. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you. <laughs> Moving on Great. to items removed from the consent agenda. Does anybody have an item they'd like removed? Seeing none, I'd ask Manager May to please read. First on the consent agenda this evening is 
Village Board meeting minutes. Board to consider approving the minutes of the Village Board meeting held May 24th, 2018. This is followed by Finance Ordinance Number 3 in the amount of $1,441,133.36. We have one, two, two purchase orders. First purchase order for R.W. Dunham & Company, $73,962.63. This represents the amount in the uh, contract for the construction contract for the East Richmond Water Main project. Next is Zoll Medical Group, $64,396.88, and this is for replacement uh, cardiac monitors in the fire department. The two purchase orders together with finance ordinance number three equates to $1,579,000. $492.87. We have one community event, and that's for the Independence Day celebration. Board to consider an ordinance permitting the following in regards to the 2018 4th of July celebration at Ty Warner Park. First, we have an amplified sound permit request. Next, uh, the traffic plan for the uh, evening around Ty Warner Park, uh, probably all day, uh, afternoon and evening. A special event liquor license fee waiver and then finally a waiver of the tent permit fee and that concludes the consent agenda tonight do i have a motion to approve as presented motion by addington to approve second by little motion made and second on the question i just have to compliment deputy chief on um, the traffic pattern i think he was the one that uh, Maybe ex-Chief Mulhern, but uh, I know no. Brian was the one who set that up, and it's worked fabulous at the 4th of July. So uh, I'd ask for roll call. Trustee Addington. Yes. Trustee Guzzo. Yes. Trustee Barker. Yes. Trustee Little. Yes. Trustee Barry. Yes. Trustee Nemo. Yes. Motion passes. We'll move on to new business. A, Dolce's Class Two Liquor License Request. Board to consider an ordinance increasing the number of class two liquor license by one and decreasing the number of class four by one to accommodate a request from Dolce's 15 West Quincy Street. Deputy Liquor Commissioner Muller. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening. I have with me Greg Knapbush, one of the owners of Dolce's Pizzeria and Wine Bar. Um, they, uh, Greg approached me a couple months ago and they put an application through to increase their license or change their license from a current class four which is beer and wine only to all liquors. Um, and a class two is the primary function, that of a restaurant. So nothing will change that way. The reason they want all liquors is because it's a customer demand. Um, they have a lot of generational people coming in and a lot of their customers not only want beer and wine anymore, but they would like to have uh, a mixed drink uh, with their, uh, <coughs> their food choice. And so they felt that this would be a good way to help improve their business and also uh, satisfy the needs of their customers. So they are um, increase, asking to go from a class four to all liquors in a class two. And Greg is here if you have any questions or Greg, if you have anything you want to say. Good, good evening, everybody. Always a pleasure to see you. Um, so yeah, so Dolce, we are well, just approaching just over a year and a half uh, in business in a new location, just a hundred feet down the, down the street here. Our concept and mission has always been to take that downtown white tablecloth, you know, higher end culinary experience and bring it into the suburbs and more of a casual environment to introduce people to fine wines and great food in that, in that neighborhood feel. Uh, as Mr. Mulhern stated that over this last year and a half, we've learned a lot uh, in trying to attract new customers and new business and retain existing customers uh, here. And one of the higher demand items that we've had that's both been a detractor and uh, for new people and for some returning is the fact that we don't have any craft cocktails. So we said, well, we're not large enough to be a, a bar, nor do we have any intention to ever be a bar, so how can we make this work? Um, and so what, uh, the way we'd like to do things going forward now is have kind of a, a small selection, um, kind of akin to what you'd see at a wedding, or you know, if you ever at a concert, they kind of have those little kind of bars. But then not only just have that, so we can just have something if someone needs to if they want something, but also now introduce it into the culinary experience as well. So something like, you know, if Chef creates a kind of a bourbon braised short rib, we can offer that with, you know, paired with a bourbon. So to try and not only just have it where it's, I just want something to drink, but to wrap it around our, our concept of making it part of the culinary experience. So uh, I, I 
appreciate you guys uh, listening to us today, and hopefully you'll approve that so we can, you know, make our great little business even even better here in West Madison. So thank you. I have a motion to approve. Motion to approve, Little. Second, Nero. Motion made and second to approve. Any additional comments, questions? Seeing none, I'd ask for roll call. Trustee Little. Yes. Trustee Barry. Yes. Trustee Addington. Yes. Trustee Nero. Yes. Trustee Guzzo. Yes. Trustee Barker. Yes. Motion passes. New business B, create a brewery tavern liquor license or to consider ordinance amending chapter 10, section 10-36 to create a new liquor license classification for craft brewery taverns. And before Deputy Liquor Commissioner Mulhern uh, describes this, I do want to say that this is something we've been looking at for quite a while. It was prompted to be put on the agenda now by an individual who's looking to um, come to Westmont in this sort of a business. So go ahead. Yes, Mayor. Um, working with economic development um, and uh, Larry Forsberg and everyone downstairs, uh, we're, we're trying to look at our liquor codes, our liquor licenses, and potential new licenses for the upcoming changes coming to the downtown area and you know offering more services for people to stay here in Westmont rather than going someplace else. And one of the uh, more popular type of uh, drinking establishments becoming is our brews, brew pubs, brew, brew type places. We do have a business and the um, potential business owner Dan is here um, that is looking to start a brew operation uh, in the downtown area. He wants to do something close to the railroad tracks, but this is not concerning him, this is about the license class, but this is driving why we created this class. In order to uh, assist uh, the, a brew type operation occurring in the downtown area, um, there will be no food with this operation, this will just be brew only and sale of the brew product itself. Uh, that would run into a, a group of um, zoning and other issues. So it was determined that if we create a license class for a tavern, uh, not the traditional tavern that you would think of uh, as to um, other locations in town or other places throughout the Chicagoland area. This is a brew tavern, which is something new. Um, it's only for uh, brewing of beer only. Uh, it'll be for brewing of the beer that has to be uh, brewed on site and can be sold. No outside beers can be come in. Um, it's a control that way so that we don't allow uh, someone to close on Friday that's a brew, say I'm not going to brew anymore, but I'm going to sell everybody else's alcohol instead. It's not something what the proposal or the license is for. Again, this is for beer only, not for wine, not for whiskey or any other hard liquors. If we have that type of interest, which is possible in the future, we'll create, we'll look at creating another liquor license for that. But this is to key, put uh, a business and make licenses available for the future plans of the downtown area and the village itself. Brew, this brew tavern is not restricted to the downtown area, it's village-wide. And I know we have the individual who's interested in opening. Wait, well, let's vote on this first and then uh, he can maybe come up and explain what he's gonna Motion do. Motion to approve as presented. Second. Zero. Motion to made, <clears throat> second to approve as presented. Uh, questions? Yeah, just a, a quick question to John. I'm, uh, I, I'm sure you're comfortable with this arrangement as it's manageable um, from a legal standpoint. It's certainly legal. I mean, you have the right to create liquor license classifications that you see fit. So from that standpoint, sure, I'm, I'm comfortable. I'm, I'm not sure what the... Well, I just want to know that we have, we have the ability to um, regulate that in a way that, that's... Um, we're creating a brew situation there, but just like any other liquor license, it can be limited. You know, there's, yes. there's For, one available if we create it, or two, or three, or yes, whatever. And, and the idea of uh, prohibiting outside beer from being sold on this premises is is certainly legal. Right. So, and, and you know, that's pretty common with a brewery. They're not going to allow outside beer to be sold, but. To Mr. Mulhern's point, if uh, if they were to close down their brewery operations and just want to sell Old Style and Budweiser, they would not be allowed, allowed to do so. Right. All right. That's all. Thank you. The recommended license fee would be. That's something we're looking for the board's direction. Uh, a regular uh, license fee for a tavern is three thousand dollars, being that this is just a brew in a small 
a smaller type business. Um, I was going to equate it to our class four license, which I believe is fifteen hundred dollars. Uh, we had a recommendation. We had staff, and we get together. Is maybe a thousand dollars is what we're recommending for this size. But that's something for the board to. Uh, we're looking for their input as well. It's not written in the ordinance itself, but our recommendation. It is. It's it is? It's yeah, there's a separate section that's attached. that says two thousand. Okay, I, I stand corrected. And that's because the uh, tavern license is three thousand, and uh, I think the recommendation was two thousand less. Because it's a smaller type. It's not a full tavern with all liquors mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, currently our brewery license is for just manufacturing district the one the other the other brewery we have is uh, myths and legends which is located in the manufacturing district because it's manufacturing and that's why it was is was uh, down there um, we do have um, um, interest uh, in that type of business as well uh, however, that prevents it from having anything else such as food. You, you see your brew pubs usually have food, um, and that's the normal staple. Um, that may something that may come to the board in the future, but right now it's a uh, brewery uh, itself where this is more of a brew pub. It's um, a smaller scale, and it will not have large um, the silver containers like you would think of. You walk in Rock Bottom Brewery or anything like that. That's not what this will be. It's a, a lower scale a different type of brewing than that any other questions just, just that one thing you said myths and legends is not supposed to have food they cannot it's in the manufacturing they can, they, can they cannot have a restaurant so they cannot have they food, can food on the site. Though, right? they can bring food a food truck in and have food bought in that way like they currently do with um, it's a, a wood fire pizza on the back mm -hmm. of a truck. It's it's really kind of cool to see, but um, they have him come in. They can have like they currently don't like any food. Um, if there's changes, there may be a food truck out there um, uh, mm -hmm. connected with um, the business itself. Thank you. Seeing no additional questions, uh, roll call, please. <clears throat> Trustee Barry. Yes. Trustee Nero. Yes. Trustee Barker. Yes. Trustee Little. Yes. Trustee Addington. Yes. Trustee Guzzo. Yes. Motion passes. Would you like to uh, introduce us to the gentleman who's interested with uh, that class? As you see, it um, well, the business with the potential business will be, I believe, it's 41 North Gas. Okay. For those who uh, of us, it's right next to the Westmont Funeral Service. That was why last month we had you take out the restriction being near funeral service. Um, it's called Scallywag Brewing. If you go by the windows, the, uh, Dan has signs out there. Um, Dan is the one that came to the village seeking to put this type of business into downtown. And with economic development, this is the type of business uh, that they have been looking to try to get a brew operation or a brew pub, preferably, but a brew operation in the downtown area to meet our future needs. And so Dan has approached the village with a proposal which then thus ignited the or started the wheels in motion for the ordinance you just approved, the license you just approved. So I will uh, let you talk. Uh, I will introduce Dan, and if you want to give us a very brief overview, so that everyone can get to the street fair, but a brief overview as to what your plans are. Thank you, Tom. Um, so as Tom mentioned, it's uh, going to be a small brewery, very low scale. Um, we're only looking at about three barrels right now for output. Um, we'll be doing. The production will be in the back area of, I guess it was previously a barber shop, that, that space. Um, we'll also be doing coffee roasting for, uh, to target the commuters in the morning as they're, as they're going by, um, things like that. And it's, it's really important to us to fit into the community, to make it kind of a community gathering space where people can just have somewhere to come and be. You don't necessarily have to come and drink, but you can come and hang out and spend time there and you know, partake of our wares if you wish. Um, so if, if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to answer. Yeah, well, I'm sure you'll be coming before yeah. us. Be, be, oh, yeah. probably multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> probably every month for the next, <laughs> hopefully not too many months. And I, I, I would imagine you've met with the fire department. We'll be meeting with them? We'll be meeting with the fire department. Okay. Yes. And I, our, I'm, I'll be our, having a call with, um, actually with Larry tomorrow. Okay. And what time are you going to open for coffee? You know, Optimistically, I would say six. Realistically, probably closer to six thirty or seven. <laughs> Sometimes I like to sleep in. <laughs> I've got to brew the coffee before I can have my coffee. So <laughs> I understand that. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're still trying to lock down times. Uh, obviously, the partners are. You know, we're 
some things are kind of tabled for later discussion, but uh, the current idea that we're running with is we'll open about 6.30, that's around when you know the early commuters go. Stay up until about 10, and then we can lock the doors, go in the back, brew for the day, and then open back up. You know, We all have children, so that gives us an opportunity to go pick our children up, um, either bring them back or take them home or whatever, and then we can come back and open them for the evenings around 4 or so, 3, 30, 4 o'clock. So we'll, we'll, lock, we'll lock down all those times kind of based on our schedules as well as the community, what's, what the demand is at the time. So. And Tom, as far as the layout inside the seating, that'll be done, right? Right. What Dan is going to have to do is he has to submit a, uh, a liquor license application. Um, that'll be his next step once we created this license class. Um, it will be, he'll be, he and his partners will be subject to a background investigation. Also, Mayor, they must submit a seating chart for your approval before uh, it's approved that way. Dan is mentioning in the brewing will be either in the back or uh, I guess there's a lower uh, floor there. Um, and uh, they'll be that way making more space. Um, and in the, the proposal that I saw from Dan, it's going to be a rather comfortable, unique, not a fancy brew pub kind of wall. Yeah, we're looking. Yeah. We're looking Actually, at if I can, I appreciate all the interest in the business and everything, but we, I don't know that we should be reviewing the actual business okay. here tonight. They still have to go through planning yeah. and zoning. Yeah, and yeah. so they, well, they, their seating chart has to be approved by your mayor before they get the license. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you. I'm sorry. No, that's <laughs> <right>. <laughs> he wants to see the cars. All right, thank you all. All right, moving on. New business C. In Intergovernmental agreement with the Westmont Park District. Board to consider ordinance approving an intergovernmental agreement with the Westmont Park District for storm water management purposes. Manager May. This is a, an agreement, and I'll, and I'll uh, start right away and say this is not ready for approval here tonight. At the time we put it on the agenda, we expected so. Uh, it was as recently as. Uh, 10 minutes before the meeting started that we saw the recent draft copy uh, from the Westmont Park District itself. But it does represent an agreement that we talked about before uh, tonight, Administrative Finance Committee and previously regarding the, uh, the, the a multi-part uh, project with the Westmont Park District, whereas we have properties on uh, North Warwick where we are planning and actually are in design for stormwater management improvements. Uh, this is contiguous to, uh, almost contiguous to uh, Fritz Worley Park, and there's another parcel in between that uh, this agreement will also specify the interests about um, uh, approaching, uh, working towards acquisition of that property as well, and then how that can go into one big improvement, and then it would all be one big park. Uh, the properties would be transferred to the Westmont Park District at that time in one park complex, but we still maintain the stormwater management. This is in combination with a, an exchange for uh, other stormwater management improvements up near Ty Warner Park and the um, and the, the properties up there as well. So there's there's a lot of parts, but it's, a, it's the exchange of who's doing what. Uh, there's financial contributions and, and then future maintenance responsibilities are different too. It's similar to what we do with our village-wide relationship with uh, property maintenance, uh, uh, well, stormwater management uses on park owned property. And uh, this particular one uh, has a lot of parts and the, the, the agreement is not ready for approval tonight. I don't know if the postponement should be to a, a date certain. We'll, we'll just um, do that to an indefinite date, I guess. And, uh, or I'm asking that you do that while we review the agreement. Motion to postpone to whenever we got a time back uncertain. On. <laughs> Motion was made to postpone. Second, by second, Barry. Barry. On the question. Just another good example of Westmont working with multiple layers of government. Uh, you and you've made the motion, right? Because yeah. I was writing. And again, like Manager May said, this is the same sort of agreement we've had for years. It just involves as unique parts. A little bit, yeah. So the park owns all those detention, but the village maintains the water. Um, seeing any, no other questions, roll call. Trustee Nero. Yes. Trustee Barry. Yes. Trustee Little. Yes. Trustee Barker. Yes. Trustee Guzzo. Yes. Trustee Annie. Yes. Motion passes. And miscellaneous. Does anybody nope. have any? No. no. Oh, you, you one one item. Wait, the attorney. And so does Chief. Item so. D, Mayor. 
could have a date if oh. you're in a surplus. Oh, that's right. Uh, I, Linda looked over here and I wanted to uh, <laughs> She's ready. declare She's items of surplus equipment. Move. Board to consider ordinance to declare nine length, lengths of fire hose as surplus property. Chief Weiss. Thank you, Mayor. The fire hose as defined in the attachment has outlived its useful life and is outdated, non-functioning, or otherwise not economically maintainable. The hose will be sold, donated, or scrapped as appropriate. The hose, upon being declared surplus and disposed of, will be removed from the village's property inventory. This is a result of every year we uh, are mandated through our ISO requirements and accreditation to do hose testing on all our holes. Uh, we have over 20,000 feet of holes between all our vehicles, uh, and we had nine lengths fail this year. And uh, as we have always done in the past, is uh, I always try to find a volunteer department that could use this hose that are not underneath those requirements and we donate it to a volunteer department. Do I have a motion to declare so, it? So moved, Sir. Guzzo. Second, Little. Motion been made and second. Uh, questions, comments, roll call. Trustee Guzzo. Yes. Trustee Addington. Yes. Trustee Little. Yes. Trustee Parker. Yes. Trustee Nero. Yes. Trustee Perry. Yes. Motion passes. Now miscellaneous. Anybody have any, seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn and there's no executive session tonight. Yeah. Okay. I have a motion to adjourn? <laughs> motion to adjourn, Nero. Second. Second. <laughs> <laughs> Second. <laughs> Second. Second. Second a little. It's the one with the orange shirt that's gonna <laughs> run out to the, yeah. yeah. Uh, roll call please. <laughs> Trustee Nero. Yes. Trustee Guzzo. Yes. Trustee Barker. Yes. Trustee Little. Yes. Trustee Barry. Yes. Trustee Addington. Yes. Thank you. This meeting is adjourned. Thanks. Thank you.